This is For The Creators. Welcome back to another episode of For The Creators. I'm Ryan Now, one of your hosts. And today we sit down with a legend in these parts. Uh, we sit down with Rooney, a.k.a. Risky Rhodes, and he is a pioneer in the, the visual side of the grime scene in the UK. Rooney started documenting the grime scene back in 2003. Started out making DVDs, interviewing all of the artists, recording pirate radio sessions, freestyles, and everything in between. His work transcended East London, where it all began, and reached places like Russia and Kazakhstan. Even the likes of Drake and fame director Dave Myers are fans. We discuss everything from what it was like getting his very first camera, learning how to edit, publishing DVDs, shooting videos with Skepta on a handy cam, and documenting the grime scene right from the start, to learning how to become a black cab driver to fund his dream and give him the life of freedom he enjoys today. And for anyone that's also in a position where they're funding their dreams, this one's especially for you. I think you're going to get a lot from it. And if you're a fan of grime, get ready to take a trip down memory lane with Risky Roads. All right, cool. Rooney, a.k.a. Risky Roads. What's happening, bro? You cool? Thank you, man. I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for coming down. No, thanks for having me, man. I really appreciate you coming down. It's all good. It's legendary good. shit, right? Here. <laughs> yeah, it's all good, man. It's a, <laughs> just another, yeah, it's, it's nice to, you know, have a talk about what's going on. Yeah, man, nice. definitely. Cool. So I've got a bunch of questions. Obviously, we can go down memory lane. Um, yeah. Can you set the scene for our listeners? What What it was like being at like the inception of, of the grime scene it was just basically I was a fan mm. like me and my friend Sparky like we both worked at Riven Division so like what was, was Riven Division it was a what? record shop yeah like it's kind of like the, the shop where everyone used to come in and sell their like their white labels or it's probably a place where a lot of MCs made their first money mm. and uh yeah I used to work there on a Saturday and Maximum worked there me Sparky Maximum from, from Boy uh, Better Know. Yeah, Boy Better Know. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, basically it was like artists used to come in because back in the day you had, there was like a couple of like little D, like DVD things. You had um, sets that A-plus had been filming or like I think Lord of the Decks had just come out as well. Yes. And it was like other than them, there wasn't anything. So it's like some MCs used to come into the record shop and used to know their voice from Pirate Radio but didn't know what they looked like. And I remember mm-hmm. saying to Sparky, like, because he'd been working in Rhythm for ages, we should, we should do a DVD, you know? Like, you know more MCs than I know. Mm-hmm. But, like, well, he was like, yeah, but can, like, filming and all that, editing. I was like, oh, don't worry about that, I'll learn that. Yeah, and yeah. I, will, I went home and I remember I, I said to my nan, can you lend me the money for a camera? She lent me the money for a camera. And uh, Did you know what camera to buy and stuff? I just bought it? a handy cam, Samsung yeah. handy camera. Just, like, literally one you would take on holiday. Where'd you get it from? Uh, Curry's. <laughs> Yeah, 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 in my land, Curry's in my land, literally yeah. just walked in there, bought this candy cam, and that was it, that was the the start, and uh, yeah, went back in, said to Sparky, yeah, yeah, like, I got this this software, there was a software mentioned, video editing one, when I was at um, college, mm. never ever got taught it, but they mentioned, like, Premiere, so I remember I managed to get a copy of Premiere, and that was it, like, yeah. just started blagging it. <laughs> what What college did you go? Uh, I went to Hackney Community College, and then I went to London Met for a little while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, but self-taught, all of this stuff. Mm. I've done computing. (laughs) Wow. Yeah, so it's a complete different change. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Mad. So, you're in Rhythm Division, Mm. you started the the DVDs now. Um, How did you go about that, in terms of, like, like, meeting MCs and... Like, a few of them used to come in, mm. and Sparky knew a lot of them because he'd been there for ages, so he'd sold a lot of their tunes. So it was, like, phone calls. And then we'd done J2K and Rico. They was the first ever interviews that we'd done. Yeah. J2K come to Rhythm, and then Rico, we met at Bo McDonald's. So we literally, <laughs> that was the first two. And then from there, the word started getting around, and people mm. wanted to be on it. And before you know it, we had the whole scene. Like, literally, like... How fast did that happen? It took about... It took about a year, mm. start to finish, to to do the whole project. Yeah. Because obviously I'm learning editing as I go. So like, as you get in it, you get in it. And you want to get everyone. Yeah. So, like, literally, we just covered the whole, everything. It's crazy, man. Because obviously, I'm, we're probably, probably going to get to this, yeah. like, later. But back then, 
you really had to like get a sense of what the scene mm. what, what was happening yeah do you know what I mean because it's not like now where you can it's like real time do yeah, you know what I mean course, like yeah. back then yeah, you had no sense yeah. of, of what was going on exactly so you had to watch the DVDs to understand what was going on in the scene and stuff yeah. and a lot of a lot of people was broke on them DVDs like you'd hear them for the first time on the DVD so we'd yeah. go around and think oh yeah this geezer's sick like I need to go and get him and you travel to wherever to get him mm. and then everyone else heard them from the DVD so some people like blew up off the back of the DVDs yeah, yeah. so it was like the early kind of way of getting through you know before the channels and all that sort of stuff so exactly yeah but this is before channels yeah, before, started yeah, jumping before you, was... there wasn't even YouTube when I started Risky no, no no none of that yeah, well, you well, had pirate radio and DVDs. Basically. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, there was nothing. There was no other way to be heard, and the DVD was the only way to be seen. So that that must have been mad as well, like because so you had pirate radio, you had DVDs, and you also had raves. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, it was very much a physical yeah, you scene. To, yeah, yeah, you had to go and be about. You had to be about. Yeah, to be about. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. How did you did you ever find yourself like being caught in between? Because obviously back then, yeah. there's a lot like clash, clash culture. Yeah. Did you find yourself ever in a situation where you was like in between or was you, were you like, no, we always played the neutral. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. We was always the neutral. So like you had, and what, when we was kind of always wanted to be that middle ground, like, like when I, like, it was like, if someone had said something about someone, then it was like, oh, so-and-so is like, so it was like both parties knew about the thing and it was mm. like, they had their opportunity to come back and keep it neutral do you know yeah. what I mean because like, it wasn't a thing where you wanted someone to watch it and be surprised and be like oh we don't, you done done us over because yeah, yeah. we wanted to just push what was going on and that was just part of the thing at the time like mm. the little sins and whatever like yeah it was just the, the, it, like you said that like, it's literally a window into the scene at that time like mm. you could see what was going on just by watching the DVD like you see the who did it who got on with who who never and yeah, yeah. mad did you get a sense that at the time that you were doing something like special and now legendary for me yeah because not for anyone else it was more like I'm meeting and all these people that I've grown up listening to or because mm. you like, said you were a fan yeah, first and like, foremost pay as you go and nasty are the reason that I probably picked up a camera because they got me into it like listening like it was obviously garage and that and then pay as you go come along and it, your ear started to go into this MC kind of mm. and then nasty crew come along and so without them, I probably wouldn't have even picked up a camera anyway. So then I'm meeting them and then I'm calling them friends. It's mm. like, right, this is mad. <laughs> and then it's growing and growing and growing. And yeah, I never, like, you know that some, like the scene was special because obviously it took you into it, but you never realised how special it was going to get to for other people. Like, because it was just genuinely, like I said, a genuine fan running around with a camera. Yeah. And then, yeah, it becoming this thing of like, oh, what can we do next to... Yeah. Did you feel that it was becoming like a, a real like movement? Like, did, definitely, did, yeah. yeah, yeah. There was definitely that energy of like, we're not having it anymore. Mm. Like, we want to be heard, and we're going to be heard. Yeah. And across the like from Risky Rose One Two to the movement and F Radio, you can see it's getting more and more like mm. that. You know, like across the pro progression of the DVDs, you can see that everything's starting to move into that way of it's getting accepted. Yeah. And then now look where we are. I get. Three stars sent to me from like Kazakhstan, <laughs> Russia, South Africa. It's literally global. Yeah, New Zealand, Australia, loads of that. It's mad. When did you know that the scene was going global? You know what? It was, um, there was a couple of incidents though, over like a few years. Like, I think one of my, for me, that like that I knew that I was going that way was I loaded up. Instagram one day I was at work so I'm a black cab driver as well as as this mm. and I'm at work one day I hadn't even posted anything music related and I had like 300 odd new followers I thought well what's going on here and I got Drake follow me wow. so off the back of Drake follow me all of this yeah. like, all these followers started when so was that? I, um, that must have been about 2.15 so you're in your cab yeah, and just, you just seen that Drake's yeah, followed you, followed you. What, did yeah. you what did you I do? I was just like right this is nuts because like, yeah. I'm, I'm a fan of Drake since like Mm. 10 years back like movement yeah. DVD times like, yeah. I'm listening to Drake Scorcher showed me about him mm. and uh, yeah so like, I was like this is nuts messaging him a few convos back and forth and I ended up linking up with him in Miami sick yeah and um, yeah so that was kind of like raw someone like that knows about what I do yeah 
did he say what 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 what, what was the trigger for that? No, he just said that he was he, he was a fan of my stuff and yeah. like, been, so I think he's just yeah. been watching Graham yeah, and yeah, exactly. obviously and he started uh, from the yeah, beginning and yeah, it's yeah. Come, come through. That's sick. And uh, and then after that, it was like when I tried to do this worldwide series, mm. I saw a few MCs from different countries and then off the back of that, it was all like in instant replies like yeah mm. of course like risky road is legendary and i was thinking bro like russia's telling me this or, <laughs> she's mad like kazakhstan's crazy yeah. like uh, like the the spread it was just mad it's like for for them two things it was That's pretty nuts. like yeah pretty mad that is nuts to realize that it's gone that far you know yeah yeah so i was in new york mm. um when skepta performed at moma um yeah with I think novelist was there and stuff and that was the I think that was 2015 yeah. as well and that was the moment when I saw like our culture like East London yeah. grime culture I saw like the way that you know like when we hear when we yeah. hear grime there's a certain yeah. movement that course, you do yeah, yeah. when you hear it like there's yeah, a certain like yeah, the, 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 yeah the like there's happens, a certain yeah. bop like yeah. even like your facial expressions yeah, yeah, and course. there's a the certain screw, like skank yeah. like that, that you <laughs> do with it and I thought like that was exclusive to like London culture yeah. because that's how we've grown up. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Of course. And I'm in New York and I'm seeing like all these New Yorkers yeah. doing the same thing. And I was like, it's mad. Rah. That yeah. was the moment where the penny dropped and I was like, yeah, right. This is about to blow big time. Cause New York, they, um, from risky roads too. We had a crew, we had one crew from LA on there. So this is like 2005, six times. Mm. And one a guy from New York, his name was Matt Shade Tech, and Jammer had done a lot of work with him. Mm. And I think, how, I don't know how Jammer found him, but they'd worked quite a lot. And I think that bridge, the New York bridge, started early. Right. So that's probably why they're more yes. the way they are, because they've had pockets of it mm -hmm. for a long time. And obviously the ASAP Skepta connect. Yes. And yeah, yeah. It's all kind of like, and then even like, I shot the video for um, It Ain't Safe. That's right, Young yeah. Lord and that. So yeah. like, I've had ASAP chilling in my house, like mm. the mob, well, he was editing the video. It's like right. surreal. Mm. But they get it because like you said, like there's been pockets of it for a long for a long time. And mm. yeah, when you see things like that, it's, it's special though, isn't it? When you see what London's doing to other places or like England. It, it was nuts. It was yeah. nuts. It was, it was weird as well because I was like, rah, okay, so this is how Americans have felt like yeah. from time. Yeah. Because we've consumed their culture like full full force from yeah. from from early, so yeah, it was just like seeing that reversed it was it was nuts. Yeah, it was yeah. nuts. It was a good thing about that, like you just mentioned it, like off air, off air, the Yo MTV rap thing. Yes, I grew when I was at school. I used to watch MTV rap yeah, yeah, for yeah. the new artists coming yes. through from America, mm. and then go and buy their tapes, and all of a sudden I'm doing the advert for the UK one. Like, Tell us how did how did that come about? A friend of mine works at a production company who was doing the, the thing and they wanted like a, because of the cab driver thing yeah, as well, like it's a mad story and they wanted to do something with it. And uh, it was just one of them things of like, they thought it'd be cool to have someone who, if you know the scene, mm. can be saying all this stuff. But then if you don't know, it looks like a cab driver. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And that was the whole thing that they because wanted behind to, it. To be honest, I didn't know what you looked like. Yeah. Okay. And it wasn't until my my boy um, Loudmouth. Yeah, yeah, that's the guy. That's Louis, the one who put me. Oh, on shut up! Yeah, there you go. Yeah, All right, the, yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know. Right, yeah. there you go. And he's like, "Yeah, big up Risky Roads." I was like, "Raw, okay." Yeah, but I I didn't know obviously that you're a black cab driver, so okay. I, I thought you was playing a role. Yeah. of a of a black <laughs> no, cab no, driver. No, no, that's that's me. That's the side life. That's yeah. the that's the dream funder. Mm. Talk about that though, because I don't think a lot of people realize. You know, like life yeah. happens isn't it like yeah, not course. even life happens like life is what it is mm. um and there's nothing wrong yeah. with you know uh, creating a life that you want whilst doing whatever yeah and we're in the creative world as you as you know there's a lot of freebies mm. not everything's always paid like yeah or you the budgets ain't always massive or <laughs> you know yeah and it was like i wanted to have something where like with a black cab, it's complete freedom. You earn as much or a little as you want. You do the times you want. You work for yourself. That's a very good point, you know. And I can carry on doing this life. Like I could be at, like a couple of weeks ago, I was out doing cab. Skip phones me up. Rune, you want to shoot a video for me? Yeah, cool. When do you want to do it? All right, come meet me tonight. After like, go and meet Skip. 
uh, what listened to the um, Shaylin Skip Sus tune. Yeah, worked out all what we needed, shot that, and that was it. Uh, it's like so that allows me to do this. Same with gigs last week. Like yeah. Rune, do a vid for me later. Yeah, cool. What tune? Theophilus London, the baby tune. Yeah, all right, cool. Yeah, wicked. That Cap tune, off. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, yeah. So I <laughs> did the vid for that, and it was just like, but the cab allows me to always know that I'm okay. Mm. Like it's it a back, freedom, yeah, yeah. Freedom, like, and I know that I've got, I, like, I'm never on my face. Like, mm. In in a creative world, sometimes you know, like it's a lot of pretense. Sometimes people pretend that they're caking, mm-hmm. but they might not be, and then exactly. that adds. Like we were saying before, in a creative world, sometimes you could be susceptible to down periods or like little bits of depression spurts or you get yourself, you beat yourself up for not being where you feel that you could be, should be, all of that nonsense. Mm. And the cab was my way of allowing me to have both and not have to do a video for someone that might not like the tune for the sake of, I need the money. Yeah, It was like, you know, let me do something where I know like I, I'm cool yeah exactly and it gives me and it allows me to fund this like mm. uh, I'm working on a project at the moment and it was like self-funded me and a friend you know like Sick. but I couldn't have done that without a cap exactly so, so tell me about how, how you got to that decision because obviously mm. do, um, we have a lot of American listeners yeah. by the way okay um, they might not realise that black becoming a black cab driver is not the same as becoming no. an Uber driver there's yeah. That you have to learn yeah it took me three years yeah you have to learn the London map off yeah. my heart right yeah yeah. You have to, um, basically you get a thing called the blue books like the runs like it's 320 runs you learn them they're like the core backbone of London mm. after that after you learn them you have to keep repeating them every day every day every day every day every day you get them then you have to go and find points of interest you go points of interest. Then you get a multiple choice test that you have to go in and pass called a map test. Mm. Pass that test, then you go for appearances, one-on-one. So, like, you could sit there and say to me, Selfridges, I say to you, Oxford Street. You say, yeah. And you say to me, Harrods, I say, um, Brompton Road. Yeah. yeah. All right, how do you get there? So I leave on the right, Oxford Street, left here, right here, left here, right, right, left, right. Like, and you have to describe it, no map, nothing from your head. Wow. And it has to be the most direct route. Yeah. It has to go within like a piece of string. You put a piece of string on Harrods, a piece on Selfridges. Yeah. It's got to be the most direct route. And they score you off of that. And you keep going back and back and forward for tests until they feel you're ready. And then you have to do your suburbs. Then you get out. You got another, you got to do another driving test. Yeah. So by the time you're finished, you know, like 30,000 streets and roads and 20,000 plus points of interest. 50,000 points yeah. of interest in London basically yeah, yeah it's just absolutely <laughs> mental like what you have to know and it's one of the hardest things I've ever done no it is the hardest thing I've ever done yeah like if you get on your moped go and drive around learn look and whatever and yeah literally hardest thing I've ever done i got a degree as well like, but I would rather have do the, like five more degrees than do the knowledge again it's really that hard and, yeah but it's so worth it it's the most rewarding yeah because like, it's something to feel proud of, that you've gone out and done this. There's only 25,000 people in London that have done it. That's a good point, yeah. And you're your own boss. You can earn as much money as you want. You put the hours in. Yeah. It's literally like, yeah, it allows you to do any other thing that you want to do. Has that been a life changer for you? Definitely. Because it's, it's gave me the freedom to be who I want to be. And not only that, Doing the exams, it's you on your own. There's no one else. No one can do it for you. Mm. So that's a major confidence builder, and like gives you, like it lets you know, you know what? No, I'm, I, you know, I've got there's something about me because I've stuck with it. Like although I've done the same thing with the music, mm. knocked the door for like 15 years, been yep. in this, like there, still doing what I'm doing. But this was like another side of that, and this let you see that you know what? This is you on your own. You've done this. Mm. And it kind of builds you as a different person. And obviously being in a cab, you and passengers or whatever, it's another level of self that you have to become because you've got to be able to conversate with... And it kind of brings you out of yourself. And yeah. I think from that, doing TV work and things like that has become easier for me mm. because it gives you like a whole other level of confidence. It's like I can talk to anybody because you've yeah, done it exactly yeah exactly well what's funny about that as well is, is obviously in the grime scene you had to do that as well because mm. you're going around meeting yeah. different mcs from different parts of london and asking them different questions yeah so 
I suppose you kind of that was your breeding ground for yeah, that definitely and I think as well like I say this quite a lot it's like when I was younger I think you know like you you're a lot shyer than you are now and all yeah, that kind yeah. of and I was kind of quiet when I was younger mm. and then Risky Rose come along and I could put on another mask I'm risky mm, mm, mm. so I'm not Rooney anymore I'm risky yeah, yeah. and I think over the years and then doing the cab Rooney and Risky have become the same person and the mask come off and it's the same guy right you know, like, if that makes sense. Yes, like, that makes complete sense. And that is what that gave me. Oh. And it's allowed me to, like I said, fund other projects without... Like, if I want to do something, like, I've done a video for Creeper, Danny Weed's instrumental. Mm. I wanted to do that, so I phoned up Danny and Nick. I was like, yeah, can I do that? He's like, yeah, do it. But I funded that because right. I wanted to do it. Yeah. Without the cab, you know, like, you, you wouldn't have been able to have, like, mm. a little bit of extra money to think, oh, I'm going to do that. So creatively like you're under pressure yeah and that allows me to to do that that's so important man that's so important because i think people stigmatize being creative and having uh an income yeah like definitely. An, a definite income and it's not until you like because i've done both yeah like one side yeah. just just work one side just mm. music for example and then both and the times when you're doing both depending on what you're doing up with the cab yeah. like you said you can turn the light off and turn yeah. it on when you want um but obviously not every role is like yeah, that. Course. However, having that peace of mind that that side of life yeah. is sorted and you can just do, do your thing in, in, in other times is, is so valuable. Yeah, it's, it's, a, so valuable. it's a great humbler as well. Like, yes. It keeps you grounded. Like, I remember when I did um, the Skep videos. Mm. There was a big article about me and Skep that we'd revived the VHS look. Right. Well, this is after. Yeah, and inspired all these videos that yeah, yeah. come after. Like, oh, did like these two videos brought back VHS and da da da. It was in NME. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like we, me and Skip was on the phone. Like, you know, you're like gassing about whatever. And something happened in the cab. Like, someone's card declined, and I had to give the fare away or something like that. Mm. And Skip was creasing. He was like, "Oh, God's God's funny," you know. He's saying Trust to me. you, "Yeah, but you know what? Still, you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Still, like." And he said, "I've had a few of them as well." And it's like it's true because like certain things, you not that I would ever get above of course like of what, but you know what? Nah, but I'm still out there doing that. Mm. So and you get people get in the cab and they recognize you and like, why are you doing this? And like, but perceptions is different. Isn't perceptions it? a crazy thing, yeah. especially when it comes to to music. Yeah. And maybe acting as well. Like yeah. it's just a, it's a weird, anything to do with like, yeah, like things you hear and things you see, there's a mad perception yeah, around definitely. it. Like if you've, if people know you, then, oh, you made it. Yeah, you know yeah I mean? of course. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like yeah. You should be in a mansion. Like, yeah, yeah. But it's not like <laughs> it that. Work like yeah, that. no, it don't work like that at all. I wish it did. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it did. Yeah. But yeah, the cabs run them things. I will always like, please God, like one day, Millions in the bank. I always keep a cab on the driveway Love just that. to remind me of, you know what, he'd been there and done that as well. And I'm proud of it, you know, because like I said, there's only 25,000 people in London. It's it. amazing, man. And it is, sadly, it is a dying art. Mm. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Hopefully it's it's around for a little while longer. It's, yeah, I, I reckon it will be. Yeah. I mean, it's... It should it, be anyway, man. I think it needs more promotion. Do you know what it is as well? Like, I think tourist aspect mm. of of a black cab and like this even yeah. like you know but i yeah. don't i don't know if people realize how yeah. much work goes, goes into, into being a no black they don't cab. they definitely don't i think mm. a lot of them think it's just sat nav like you get people getting sometimes and they'll just give you a postcode like, i don't know what that is give me the street name and take you there you know like yeah yeah so like yeah, that's man. nuts man <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy i'm gonna ask you one of your questions what do you think of the scene right now you know what it's, it's bubbling. I, I enjoy. It. I mean, I enjoy where the music is right now, mm. and kind of Grimes brought different branches of the sound as well. Yes, like the rap thing's always been there, but now you got like Afro beats and like the dubstep thing still popping, and that's created and done what it's done and mm. still moving. And then the drill things, obviously, the new sound is kind of like the new new version of that's what, what this is. Yeah. Do you think that's the closest? energy wise yeah I suppose it's kind of like that's got the kids focus at the moment massively you know and uh, you can't really discredit it because it's doing what it's doing you know mm. and um, it's one of the things I think the more and more the kids put into it the 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 less the bad stigmas will be around it you know because yeah. it will become more about the music because mm. they're yeah. all learning their art as well and in the studio you're off the streets you know so it's exactly. always a positive in, in all of it you know yeah. 
it's similar to how grime started in yeah. that you know early grime songs got banned mm. do you know what i'm saying i'm not saying that yeah. lyrical content was yeah you know it is grime got too big so they can't cap grime this is the new sound so they're trying to cap this because yes. they can and because it's measurable as well exactly like yeah. you said like you can't obviously like you had dvd sales yeah. and things like that but yeah. it's not like you can see oh this this video's got a million views and, yeah. and people are saying xyz in the comments of course do you know what i mean it's trackable yeah yeah but Back then, it was like we were saying, it was a physical yeah. scene back then. Unless you were about, you yeah. weren't You weren't about. And it wouldn't surprise me if it went back like that for a while. Because like YouTube and other places are trying to shut down all the music, like the drill channels. And it wouldn't surprise me if it went back physical for a little while. Do you reckon that would be a positive thing? Yeah, if, as long as it pushes the music and keeps the kids doing positive things. Then, mm. yeah, if it keeps them away from the streets and like adding to the madness that's going on and yeah. yeah that's it's definitely like whatever any kind of creative is positive in in a way or another you know like because it what could start off as going in studio to make a track to diss someone realizing you're good yeah and you stay in there you don't go back out on the street that's the thing <laughs> yeah that's the thing i was listening to a lot of your your interviews that yeah. you had with like gram artists yeah. early on and even back then, like they were saying, you know, I've done this, I've done that, I've done bad bits, yeah. but I've gone inside, I've come out, and because you always ask, yeah. like, what advice would you give yeah. to people coming yeah, up? Yeah. Get away from the bad stuff. Yeah. Don't worry about all of that. Like, trust me. Just you know, everyone's like, I'm trying to do this music thing, yeah. music thing. I'm trying to stay off the roads, yeah. all of that, and that's the conclusion that they that they come to. You yeah. know what I mean? And that that is ultimately it's better it's yeah. you know being creative is ultimately Course, positive yeah and mm. yeah it allows them to live a life rather than looking over your shoulder all the time you know mm. and you can it, if they can like if any kid out there can make a positive from any situation you know and better their life then do it and whatever genre of music it is you know they'd, they'd find a way of whatever it was you know like if they started singing indie tunes they would try and band indie tunes if they mm. were saying certain things you know like it's just that thing of a voice yeah and i think at the minute the music in london and that or the uk should i say is kind of like it's a major voice like because you got kids now paying attention to like politics yes. because artists are talking politics that's right so it's, it's a power move as well you know like so obviously they don't want people to <laughs> know too much or yeah, be yeah. but you know like too clued up but mm -hmm. More and more people are now because through music and exactly. genres, you know. It's similar to what you said though, as well. That you know, when grime was coming out, was like you know, we've had enough. We mm. want to be heard. Yeah, and it feels like it's the same definitely. kind of thing now. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Like, yeah, we got our struggles. Like, listen to what we're saying. Mm. Different, like mediums, but yeah, yeah, it's just another way of being heard. Mm, definitely. And uh, yeah, like I said, and eventually they'll get better at it and they keep going. Yeah, and exactly. You get the ones come through and then changes of life you see a positive like one person blows from an area it's like right, i want to be him and then take it a bit more serious mm -hmm. and then it just spirals you've seen it happen yeah, yeah, yeah. you see it 15 years deep and yeah. that's just like when you stepped into the game as a yeah. quote-unquote yeah, professional before, like, yeah. so before yeah. that as a fan you're like in yeah. it super deep so yeah obviously you see it's kind of like a formula when you, when you step, it's not a formula, but you set back and you see, all right, you can kind of predict what's going to yeah. happen. Do you know what I mean? Like there's going to be A, B and C mm. uh, artists that do blow. And because of that, it's going to create this scene. Yeah. That's what, what advice would you give to, to the, like, that generation? I think it's, like the, it's kind of like the same as what I give to everyone. It's like, don't take no for an answer. Just keep going. Mm. Like, we've all been told no. I people say to me, Oh, what are you doing that for? Why are you running around with a camera? What's the point in that? Like, ain't going to get nowhere. Da, da, da. But mm. years later, I'm still here and I've done a few bits, you know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. So it's like, yeah, like, never take the no for an answer. If something's in you to do, do it. Mm. Whatever it may be. Like, same way, like, if it means you've got to go and get another job while you're doing it, but to do it, do it. Yeah. Because it's like, yeah, just never take the no for an answer. If, 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 if that's your vision and that's what you want to do, then make it happen. Because mm -hmm. not everyone believes in it. But you just got to... Definitely, man. Definitely. And also, like, you don't know where it can take you. Exactly. So, for example, yeah. using, like, Loudmouth, for example. Yeah. Um, Louis Melvin. Yeah. He, um, he started off as an MC. Yeah. And now you're saying he works at the that production company. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, it's like, sometimes just getting into 
into the passion and into the scene can yeah. lead you in places you never f- exactly. thought it could. Yeah, 100%. Like me, I was a DJ, first of all. There you go. So I DJed old school garage and then being a DJ, buying the vinyl from the record shop, getting a Saturday job in the record shop, ended up with a camera. And so. That's how you ended up in yeah. rhythm division? Yeah. Right. So that was... Look at that. Yeah, so, so because you followed your yeah, your passion, exactly, that's what's yeah. led to all of this. Yeah, so yeah, just from being a fan of music and buying music and wanting to be involved somehow, mm. couldn't MC. <laughs> yeah. Everyone tries, isn't it? Like, yeah. <laughs> Mark drew me out a couple of Is months it? ago. You know, for that pen game. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please do me one, please <laughs> I gave him a quick eight bar. Uh, That's the first time ever. Like, but I've always been in studio with like Getz or whoever, and they're mm. like, you like give a word every now and again. Like, oh, why don't you say that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's sick. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like, yeah, no, that that. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but when you roll around with like, like the movement, for example, mm. for you, you, you're gonna know how to put things together. Exactly. <laughs> but that was never my thing to be an MC. But DJ back in the day. Yeah. I think my new one now. I'd like. I'd, I want to learn how to produce. Yes. I think I've got one tune in me. You got one? Is that one bagger? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's got to come out somewhere along the line. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you think of the actual sound of, of grime itself now? How how is it? Do you reckon it's evolved? Definitely. It's like now the lines of grime and rap are kind of close. Mm. But I like it. Yes. Because, yeah, it, yeah, it's kind of, they, they kind of lend closer to each other now. Mm. Still got its grime sounds, like you still know it's grime, like yeah. it still sounds like UK, like mm. you can hear it in, uh, it's, uh, yeah, this is English, yeah, but yeah, I think now it's kind of they're kind of merging more the rap grime line, mm. definitely. Because, yeah, grime yeah, that's had that yeah. very specific yeah, yeah. sound, right, yeah. back in the day, and yeah, now. Because now you get a lot of the, the rap artists on that kind yeah. of sound. It's kind of evolved together. Because yeah, it became more of like song format because before it was like exactly, eight, yeah. eight bars, bars or, and then yeah. another eight bars and then different MCs yeah. doing their, their bars over it. So, yeah. Yeah, the format slightly changed a little bit. you still got it's like some artists who are real true to mm. the old school grime sound. Yeah. Like, I know Jammer's last project, he went, he wanted that old school grime sound and he mm. stuck to that. Yeah. Because, yeah, it's like, no, you know what? it's a time for you to hear that again. Mm. And it was cold because it was like nice to hear, you know? Like, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So yeah, it's, it's kind of, that, that grime's just kind of broadened mm. the sound. You can go either way. Like it can be like close to rap, but it can also be that raw, yeah. esky beat sound. Oh, was, for me, that was the, like the best era, yeah. man. Like, yeah, because you would hear a pirate uh, radio set yeah. And you'd hear all the, the, all the MCs and stuff on there. And because because there was no like social media or anything back then, it became kind of like cult yeah. in that sense. Like yeah, yeah. I went to college in, in East London, so yeah. we'd all be like sharing a, a headphone, mm. listening to sets that someone's recorded. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So then the buzz, like the, the buzz is tangible. Of course, yeah. Do you know definitely. what I'm saying? It's not yeah, like, yeah. oh, this has got a thousand likes or anything like that. Yeah. Like you can actually... mean nothing. No, you yeah. could actually feel it and see it like... Uh, everyone's favourite MC yeah. and all was, of that like there's it nothing was... better than being in school and someone had a tape player or something playing out and you heard like I don't know say for example like D-Double comes in oh mate <laughs> instant everyone's going nuts like yeah, mad. wheeling up the tape yeah yeah like, <laughs> rewind it play again play trust again. me like, certain MCs like yeah D was de- D's definitely one of them ones yeah but yeah he, like them sort of tapes they was like currency at school as well I'm telling you, I'm telling yeah. you. Oh, you got that new nasty thing. I you that for a page go take and da 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 da. <laughs> like, you know, like, it's like, yeah, it, it was, was mad. mad physical back then. It wasn't even too long. Well, but it doesn't sound too long yeah. to us, maybe. But yeah. some kids now they don't even know what case it looks like. That's the maddest thing. No, because it's it's literally all yeah. digital. Yeah. It's all digital. Like back then, like you said, you you was buying records, right? Yeah. So everything's people, instant now, isn't it? Yeah. So for an artist selling a record, selling their own single, they had to put it on vinyl. Yeah. Bring it to rhythm division. Yeah. So then you can then sell it. So yeah. it's, it's all yes, yeah, and then real. hope that a DJ bought it, played it on radio to spread it to then more. That was how exactly, it, yeah. exactly. Now everything's instantaneous. Mm. Like there's no anticipation of music anymore. No. Like whereas before, you know, you just go in a record shop. Is it out yet? Yes. Is that out yet? Like now, you just you know when it's out and it's instant. Like all exactly. right, cool. Twelve o'clock at night, it's out. All right, yeah, I've got yeah. It on my phone. And I've already got I've it. Listen to it. Yeah, yeah. I've already got it because yeah. I, I pay a subscription. Yeah. I think. I mean, that's good in terms of like that instantaneousness yeah. like that's just how it's evolved but th- i think we, we had that last pocket of yeah. realness yeah it was yeah but like the 
raves. Yeah. Um, uh, the pirate radio sets. Yeah. Um, I miss pirate radio. It's mad because I remember, so when I first started producing, I went to Jammer's basement. Mm. And I remember him saying, and this is this is funny because this is at the time when grime was like evolving rapidly, yeah. and even at that point he was like, "Nah, man, like the things are are changing. It's not gonna be, it's not gonna be um, a time where we can, I can produce a tune in the morning, I can get everyone to come down, record their bars, yeah. we can play it on radio." that afternoon and then everyone will know the bars by the time we go to to a rave at night yeah. and that was then yeah do you know what i mean and he said no nah, things are just like the things are changing yeah. do you know what i'm saying so but there was a point where they could do that it was just True, like yeah and it's mad yeah and so quick jam championed a lot of stuff still yeah. does to this day you know yeah, like, he does, yeah. yeah he's um he's one of them guys as well we can't get enough credit sometimes mm. for what he does for the scene as well you know what i mean yeah. like, he's been a part of a lot of different things from visual to yeah, exactly. Music, yeah, you know, so, yeah, um, you got Lord of the Mic. Yeah, you got to big him up for that as well. You know, absolutely, absolutely, man. He put so many people on. Mm. Talking about that, you've seen everyone. Yeah, you've spoken to to everyone in in the scene and beyond. Yeah. Who, who did you really want to blow that didn't? Oh, don't know. You know, there's there's been a few, I suppose. Really, yeah. There's there's quite a lot <laughs> to mm-hmm. be fair. Yeah, yeah, there's quite a few. Um, I ain't really got a name at the top of my head <laughs> who I could think, but there's a few that you wished still done it who don't okay, do it yeah. anymore. Like your demons and bruisers and Yeah. You know, like, it'd be nice to hear them yeah. still on it. Um Doctor was another one then, but oh, he's back on it now, like Doctor is so sick. I've yeah. done a tune with him. Yeah. So he's one of the best. Like, yeah, I, I agree. He's one of my favourite all time. Easily. He just makes it effortless. Yeah, effortless. Yeah, I, I want to hear him on Graham more. Like he sent me, he's been doing this freestyle Wednesday thing. Is it? And he sent me a few of them on his Insta. Yeah, he's cold. I said he's to him, bro, please keep doing the Graham thing because mm. it's just that. Uh, yeah, cold. he sits on it nice. Yeah, and his voice and everything, it just cuts. Like <laughs> he's just yeah. cold. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's one. He, he should definitely. My mum still sings one of the the songs that we did with him. You know, something yeah. wicked or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> he's so sick. Yeah. That, yeah, he's bad, he's bad. There's, yeah, there's a few, I suppose, man, like, just looking back. But I think now the way the music is, there's, there's scope, they come back, you can do something, and mm. you got ch- you know what I mean? Like, because I think with Graham, more so than any other indish- like any other genre, if you was part of that foundation core, it's like you've got instant access to come back and you're cool. Yeah. You know, like, um, like Bruiser come back now. Everyone had- like yeah, you can't chat to him. He was yeah, about from it. Yeah, yeah, he laid. Yeah, he laid the foundation. He helped lay the foundation, and that's how Graham is. And I mm. think that's the beauty of what Graham is because it is like it's like a big dysfunctional family. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's the best description <laughs> that I can give it. That's, and, that is really true. Yeah, and it's like we've all been there and we've all seen the struggles. And again, referring back to Jamry, put an analogy up the other day. It was like it's like building a house. A couple people people laid the foundations. A couple more come, built the walls, and then. Now the house is built, everyone can just come through. Mm. <laughs> and that's... It's mad it's being true. part of that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely to know that you've played like, and you're there and you've helped. And Grimes, it probably one of the only genres that's had people like me, Jammer and A+, documenting from the beginning. Yeah, exactly. you've seen it and you've got physical evidence of the growth of it. Because even before it was Grime, we was, we was filming it. It was called Garage still. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, like, yeah, like, like certain questions, like Sparky or myself was asking in the first times. It was like, so yeah, how long have you been doing garage? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's not even grime. You <laughs> no, know? no, because it didn't yeah, have a name. Didn't then. have a name. Yeah. Raw. That's crazy. Thinking about that, like you're saying that that was one of the first scenes to be documented from the beginning. Mm. So now we've got the drill scene. Yeah. Obviously, there's visuals. Yeah. But it's not really being documented. documented. No, no, no. It's like, like, that's the, what I mean. I think grime's a unique thing in itself. It's just music videos. That's all everyone cares about. That's all about it is, yeah. Even like. even Afro yeah. scene is not really documented. No. I mean, well, I'm not aware that it is. No, at no, least. no. Or me either. It's just literally like your freestyles or music videos. See, with us, it was interviews, yeah, radio sets, freestyles. And then after that, we had other little segments. Like, with Risky Rose, we always tried to do like, 
little bit of educational bits like so we we're going to see producers and mm. how to make a beat yeah, and remember, they tell yeah. us how to make the beat and what equipment they're using and yeah just kind of things like that you know and it's not really like that now and, and where things have changed sometimes you think is the attention span mm. different yeah. now because of things like that you know where yes yeah, it's, it's definitely something to think about do you think someone like yourself putting like put yourself yeah. Like if you were Risky Roads and you were yeah. 15 again, would you, knowing what the drill scene is like, yeah. for example, put yourself in those situations where it's like you could be putting yourself into a... It's kind of different to what it was back then. Mm. So that's the... Now I don't know what it's like now out there on, on that level of... Because we yeah. just hear the music and you hear what it is like. And you hear the big tunes. Whereas if you're 15 and you're in it, you'll hear someone who's made a tune and it's different. So of course. it's hard to kind of give that. Because I suppose if I was a fan the same way as I was then, I would have. Because mm. it was like, yeah, because I went to places I shouldn't have gone with my camera. Yeah. Out of the love of it. And I think if you love something, it don't really matter. Like, because you, you'll find that, that way of mm. coming through. So there probably is a risk there. Probably is, out there. Yeah. there probably is, yeah. Someone who's on just Snapchat out there doing <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's an yeah. Instagram thing or yeah, whatever. Yeah. But yeah, it's, a, it's kind of one of them. You have to you have to be there like to understand what, mm. like, because it's different eras, different age groups, you know. But yeah. I don't see why there isn't someone out there who would be going to do that. Cause, I mean, it will be good because I think people just see the surface level and yeah. you need to see the in-betweens yeah, to, yeah, to really understand it do yeah. you know what I'm saying and obviously people do documentaries and stuff but there's always an angle on those yeah, things yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean there's yeah, always a yeah. an intention behind yeah, yeah. it there's always a message you can create whatever story you want to create it's exactly. the truth that's what the thing with Risky Roads Practice Hours Lord yeah. of the Dex Mics you saw it for what it was because we all loved it mm. and we were showing you what we wanted you to see we're showing you our love of like I want to go and see Pay As You Go so I'm filming Pay As You Go and now you lot see Pay As You Go yeah. there was no like agenda it was literally see it for what it is. Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, and that's kind of, that's what you need if you're going to do something like that, especially mm. for drill. Because it's so easy for someone else to come in and do it, know nothing about it, put it in this whole bad light yeah, that spin it, it might not on. even be. You know exactly. What I'm or, you know, like, there's, there, you can tell a story from anything. Like, it's so easy, like, as you know, from working with audio and doing podcasts, mm. so easy to alter someone's <laughs> sentence. Yeah. To make them say something you don't want them that you know what I mean it's, exactly man so yeah you can things are yeah you have to be done from someone who's a genuine fan mm. of that if you're going to document it from the in out has to be someone who knows it inside and out absolutely and like you said it's still early on yeah for that scene you could even document it now because it is going to evolve yeah, do you know what I mean yeah, like the definitely. sound's going to evolve people that get involved are going to evolve yeah. so like even now like um like with um Unknown T, mm. he's changed the sound a little bit differently. Yeah, exactly. So you're seeing the iteration, yeah. like it's it started to change and becoming like I don't know, I don't know what the word is, but it's starting to evolve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely. People are getting their their own artistic takes on mm. on it. They're getting their little stylies on yeah. it now. Yeah, exactly. Like, because yeah. they're learning. Yeah, like the kids are learning the the craft. Mm. All right, course a drill beat. Yeah, but I'm going to come at it like some like how I want to come at it. Yeah. That, that standard drill flow from when you first heard it, it's disappearing. Mm. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And it's becoming more. Yeah. You know? yeah. And from the producer's standpoint, I do want to hear the sound yeah. kind of change up a bit as well. Yeah. But I do appreciate that. It's it's, it's basically how Grime started. Yeah, like yeah. you have a restriction in terms yeah. of like, obviously now everyone's got Fruity Loops and yeah. different uh, music programs yeah. and a set amount of sounds. And, you know, you can just bang these songs yeah. out quite quite quickly. Do you know what I mean? And get them, put them up on YouTube, yeah, et cetera, definitely. like that. Yeah. So, yeah, it does evolve. Yeah, completely. And, yeah, like I said before, as long as it's a positive thing, keeps kids doing positive things and mm. giving them a chance to get out of situations. And, yeah, man, keep mm. that. Yeah, there's, there's, there's no negative if it's being used in the right way, you know what I mean? No, I agree. I agree. So, if there's a risk, there's a risky roads out there, yeah. <laughs> a young risky yeah. roads, Document like, do it. it from the, do yeah, it. definitely. Yeah. Because it has to come from someone who understands it. Mm. Like, I could jump on the bandwagon and go, and, but I don't understand the truth because I'm not in it like mm. that. Like, I was in Graham. You have to be in it. Exactly. But yeah, there's there's definitely scope for someone if they can. Absolutely. Yeah. Just, but you've got to come at it with that. you got to be neutral. you got to be. You know, like you gotta just want to show it for the love of loving it, not mm. because I'm gonna make some money. Because it's not that. 
you know what I mean? It's exactly. like you got to love it. Got to love There's it. A lot of hours in it, train journeys and whatever. Like. Exactly. <laughs> and you got to go places. <laughs> yeah. And it's a, well, it's easier to edit now than it was yeah, back then. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot easier to get a powerful computer now than yeah. than then. Yeah, man. The first risky roads took twenty four hours to render. <sighs> and if there was a mistake. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, oh, yeah, mad. Um, let's talk about because on the way here, I was listening yeah. to an early interview with Meridian. So yeah. Jamie Skepta yeah. in in I think it was Jamie's bedroom. Yeah, yeah. now that was su- super early on. Yeah. Um, so you've known Skepta, Jamie, and yeah. Judy, yeah, Adignuga, and now saying it now to people, they're like household names. Yeah, yeah. and when you were interviewing it was in their household like what what's that been like seeing their their rise like it just makes you feel proud you know Mm. they've always they've always been like crazy talent you know like but yeah it just makes you feel proud like for for the whole scene as well you know like just to know that you've been part of that and like Skeff and that come around my house all the time like Mm. regular like mum and nan and I can go to their like normal yeah like it's yes it's and it's they're just my powers you know, like, and just, they're just crazy talented. The mm. whole family. Like, even their other brother, Jason, sick designer. Yeah. Like, animator, graphic designer, sick. Like, Nuts. it's just driven family. Mm. Creative, driven geniuses, basically, in their own right, you know. It's, like, it's pretty crazy, man. Yeah. To see, to see what they've all done. Definitely. Individually. Definitely. And together, they're like a superpower, you know. That's what I'm saying. Like, even down to Jamie, like, with, like, the whole vegan thing. mm yeah, because he was like one of the first to champion the first, that. Yeah. yeah, that's what I love about Jamie. Like, because from early in the scene, he's always been uh, an outlier. Yeah, always like okay. Even in that interview I was listening to, he was like, oh, "Every MC is trying to do, like, do this like, this in it thing." That's yeah. what he was saying. Like, everyone's trying to say yeah. in it. Everyone's trying to do this. They yeah. they put their hands together. Yeah. They look left and right. Blah blah blah. Yeah. Like he's always noticed patterns. Yeah, and he was like, "No, nah, I, away from him, I yeah. ain't doing that. I'm doing yeah. my own thing." Yeah, definitely, definitely, and and then like with Skep as well, he's he's just a visionary as, as well. Like he's got an idea, and it will manifest what he's thinking. Yeah, but I just keep like that's nice. What I'm doing, mm. what I'm doing, it's genius. Like I remember when yeah. when he when he decided to move from being a DJ to a producer yeah. to producer to artist. He come around to our studio in um in Limehouse. And um, he was listening to beats, and yeah, from then he was like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm, do- I'm doing an album." Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And now look. Yeah, I know it's crazy. <laughs> I remember one of his first lyrics as well. He phoned me up and he had my name in a bar. And yeah. He sprayed it. He sprayed it on the Hot Night Seven in a, in the states. Dope. And uh, yeah, I remember he phoned me up and he used to say it all the time on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's yeah he's um yeah, he's a special talent, man. All of them. All of them, yeah. You should do a documentary on them. And it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. you got a unique viewpoint yeah. of of what's happened there. It's true, I mean? yeah. It's true, yeah. That's quite a good idea. Yeah, yeah. trust me, that would be <laughs> for the culture. You got to do that. And it, and it, <laughs> yeah, the Nuga doc. Yeah, for <laughs> real though. Like, it's just insane because you don't get you 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 hear those stories and you see those stories like um, from the past and like from America especially. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's kind of like I'm not I'm not putting them in the same yeah. same light. But like the Jackson family, for yeah. example, where each of them yeah, is crazy. like, wow, yeah. like how, from one family, really? Like, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so it's true, yeah. People need to know that story, yeah, is what true. I'm saying. Yeah, it's true. And no, you should be the one to tell yeah, it. Yeah. And it, <laughs> been there from day one, man. It, I remember man. when Jamie used to make it like that on that doc, on that interview, sorry. He'd made his own gold disc. Yeah. Put it on the wall. Sick guy. And now uh, he's got, now he's got more, them. more than one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he made his own one, sprayed his right first serious final gold. Yeah. White background, framed it. Jeremy, serious. <laughs> sick guy. Such a sick guy. I don't know, no, look. Yeah, he's got that mm. over and over. Over and over, exactly. That's crazy, man. So you said, um, I don't know if you, if you want to talk about it, but a documentary yeah. that, you're, that you're working on oh, at yeah, the moment. But, yeah, Risky Roads 0121. Yes. Yeah. Tell me about that. Basically, it was like, it's been a long time for me doing docs. I, I, I did, I presented one with Frisco um, about Pirate Radio. Mm. 
on Channel 4 um, called Pirate Mentality. But that hadn't been a risky road for like 10 years. Yeah. Like actual docs. I've yeah. been doing the music vids. That's right. And uh, yeah, like um, a friend of mine who directed the Pirate Mentality said, oh, we should do something and we come up with this idea. And he was like, oh, you know what? Let's do a risky road. Let's call it a risky road. And it kind of ended up being like the story of Birmingham because basically wanted to show, you know, when Grime had this quiet patch where everyone was making albums from London. Yes. Birmingham was flying. They were still mm. carrying like your JKs and Daps and yeah. everyone was carrying a torch in Birmingham, you know? That's right. And I felt it was a story that hadn't been told. So I wanted to tell the story of mm. like Birmingham's infrastructure, how it's kind of like the second home of Grime. How they've got everything London's got in yes. Birmingham. And that's what it is. So like, it's just, yeah, Risky Rose, Birmingham. So sick. telling the story of Birmingham. That is yeah. so sick, man. It's yeah. needed as well. Yeah, definitely. Because, yeah, the, um, just for people listening, like Grime was on the up and up from what, 2003? Three, yeah. Two, two, three, yeah. Yeah. And then obviously the artists that evolved from Grime yeah. started to go more into like a pop sound. Yeah. So then it naturally kind of lulled a bit. Yeah. So it's that from that period, from that period until yeah. probably Stormzy. Yeah. Came back out and oh, rev- and um, probably Skeps. That's not me. Sorry. Meridian yeah. Yeah. Skeps. Dan. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Marid- yes. Th- actually, yeah. that was the moment, yeah, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. 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 yeah Meridian Dam was the moment. Yeah. We're talking about. Yeah. Um, and then Skeps and Stormzy. That yeah. everything that happened there. Yeah. So it's that that yeah. period yeah. where it was still still happening. Yeah. And I just wanted to tell Birmingham's story, really, because mm. yeah, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of talent in mm. Birmingham. A lot. What did you learn from from doing that? Just how it felt like going back to London in the beginning. Wow. Like just everyone's hunger, everyone, but with a bit more knowledge of what it's going to be. And obviously, like, just learning of the infrastructures, the channels there that have set up their own, and why they set up, and their similarities to myself. And, yeah, it was just, it was cool to, you mm. know what I mean? And it's a bit more cinematic than The Last Risky Road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, it, it, yeah. You're not so, using the same camera? Parts. Oh, parts, yeah? Yeah. Parts. But the same one you bought in Curry's? No, that one I didn't use. I used that, the that first Handycam I bought, I used that for Risky Rose 1. Yeah. Then I upgraded to Sony. And right. that Sony cam's a legendary camera. That's, That's the, the one. one. Even the gigs video, I shot some of that on it. Yeah. The Skepta videos I shot on it. That's what you shot on me. Oh, that's sick. We've got to take a photo yeah. of that. that. That's that's like, this is like the, the, the Risky Roads camera. Yeah, like yeah. This, yeah, this is what it's like. That look is famous. For yeah. And like, now people still ask me to bring it out. I was going to ask you that as well. How does it feel knowing that that, mm. that camera, I'm pointing, pointing at your tattoo for, for listeners, yeah. um, that camera has now become, or that look yeah. has now become legendary. Yeah, it's mad. It's like someone said that it, kind of that, my doing the videos on this kind of created the aesthetic for Graham. 100%. And it's like, that's a mad thing 100%. to know that, you know, like I'm responsible for the Graham aesthetic to an extent, you know for what real? I mean? It's that, like, yes, yeah, that's a mad, mad thing. And like I said, to, to like now you can look at Puma campaigns and they're using VHS. Yeah. But they're using it because I've used it for that's these right. videos. Yeah. That's a mad thing to think, you know. Hopefully, I get a call one day from to do, <laughs> get one to do. do a product, 100% but, that it's gonna happen. Yeah, but it's um, yeah, it's mad. Like when you actually sit back and think that, like, um, Guardian interviewed me a little while ago about that thing, creating the aesthetic, and how like pop groups are using VHS after me and Skip to done what we done. That's right. And it was like, right, yeah, it's mad. Like, so th- that video was It Ain't Safe. And Man. Man, yes. Both of them. Yeah, we, yeah. we used a VHS for that. Did you, you done the um, That's Not Me remix as well, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I did that as well. Yeah. yeah. That was that. I, that was a weird one because I got called out as a cameo mm. and then ended up like, kind of directing it in a, yeah, yeah. In a sense. Because like, one of the guys who was directing it, he had a vision, but it wasn't. And Skep was just like, no, nah, ruined. You do this because you know, like right. you, you direct the scene because you know, like yeah, like yeah. me, you know, like boom. So, and then that was it, and it ended up coming off the back of that. And then after that, it was like, yeah, Rune, I got this other tune. It ended up being it ain't safe. And then then we did man, and man's like some iconic video now. Like, like I actually sat back. So obviously, when you do it, you just watch it and it's mm-hmm. sick. But I had such a gap from it the other day. I actually sat there and watched it. You know, when you watch it and think, wow, <laughs> this is like. It's proper, like yeah. it's like it's, 
it's a mood. Like if you want to show someone what London, yeah, watch watch that. Yeah, that's the inside of a like a rave in London, and there you go. That's insane. And it's a and yeah, like off the back of that, there was there was like a VHS revival. And then you're you're responsible for the VHS revival <laughs> <mad>. globally. <laughs> and, and it's mad. And then like the skit, um, the gigs Theophilus tune the other day. Um, gigs running an old kind of oh it had to be it had to be and I was like yeah I gotta bring out the old but I mixed the old with the new same with the chip one that I'd recent as well Mm. like juggled the have those videos dropped yet yeah 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 they have yeah yeah, yeah. the chip one um, shot on a new camera but I gave it that old look because I wanted to do a lot of picture in picture kind Mm. of like backgrounds with a picture up front and like different kind of styly with it and yeah that that come out quite like well, and I've seen that that quite a bit since as well. So it's it's mad when you see like stuff you've done in a video, then other people are doing in videos. It's yeah, yeah, weird. exactly. Yeah, it's that's almost like what. Um, so obviously, when when we when we're growing up, listening to me, well, watching music videos, yeah. Hype Williams, the yeah. biggest video director, and he had a very specific style, like yeah. the um, the the bars on the yeah, top yeah. had the, color bars, yeah, the, the, the color bars, or it had the picture, yeah, yeah, and then obviously everyone starts copying yeah. that stuff. And it's almost like you're that guy now. It's weird, How mad is that? Yeah, no, it's nuts. Yeah, it's nuts. Proper, proper nuts to think that you're inspiring other people to, with certain ideas and visions. And yeah, because everyone borrows bits from everyone. Of course, that's that's, that's pretty. Yeah, but it's um, yeah, it's mad when you do something and then you see it in others. You think, oh, right, all right, cool. <laughs> mad, yeah. and especially if you think like going back to what we discussed earlier about it being global. Yeah. Like you've got a gram artist in, like you said, Kazakhstan or Russia, looking at. London through the eyes yeah. of of your direction. What was mad as well? Talking about the worldwide and direction. Um, one of my favourite video directors is Dave Myers. Shut up! Wait, go on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying shut yeah. up. Like, I'm just gas. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. he's one of my favourite directors as well. <laughs> and uh, basically, I stumbled across his website and I messaged. And I was like, "Be cool to," like, you know, you just think it's like a throwaway kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Because no one answers no. when you message on their website. I got a phone call, instantaneous, like pretty much, like, and it was um, a guy called da- um, Daniel from Dave's office. Mm. He was like, "So weird, you emailed. I'm using your video as reference. No. They were using my videos as a reference for a treatment that they was writing for for an artist." Then and there, yeah, and that blew me away. And I was like, "Could you authenticate what we're writing?" And we went back and forth on this treatment for a little bit. And it was the maddest, surrealist kind of thing. And I kept in touch with his assistant, Daniel. And Dave said, like, if I ever go to LA, shout him. I'm going to chill off. So, like, I want to plan to go out there pretty soon. And Have you been before? No, I haven't. No. Neither have I. But, yeah, it's one. But that was just surreal for me. To know that, like, someone whose work I look at all the time and think, wow, was yeah. using my video as a reference. That's crazy. Yeah, he was that looking at all the old like, Risky Roads videos and the Skepta videos and was using them as references for... That is mad. And just to paint the picture for, for anyone listening, Dave Myers uh, directed all of Missy Elliott's yeah, craziest Grammy videos. Grammy Award winner for Humble. Yeah, Kendrick yeah, yeah, Lamar, Kendrick video, Lamar yeah. Ariana Grande's yeah. new videos. He's having a bit of a, a, a comeback in yeah, that sense. Yeah. But he was... I always used to watch Making the Video. Yeah. And he was always the guy, and yeah. like all these like mad Atlant- Atlantis videos, like wow, yeah, that's that was crazy. Yeah, that was kind of surreal for me. And I can email his office, and they reply, and that's they know who nuts. I am, and that it's proper. And mad. they're asking you to authenticate. Yeah. Talk about a stamp of approval. I know, isn't it? It's <laughs> kind of that was just like wow for me. And I was like, yeah, well, hopefully one day I get to work with him yeah. on a video. Yeah, I think him and Dexter Navy are my two favourites at the mm. moment. Dexter's yeah. sick. Yeah, yeah. Is that, f- um, how, um, how does he style his name? Uh, is it the, uh, Dex? uh Yeah, that's just Dexter Navy. Oh, okay. but, um, but he, um, he done The Shine, ASAP and... Skip. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know he's all yeah. that, yeah, yeah. Very, very sick director as well. Very, very. Yeah. And so he's, ha- he's from London as well. Oh, he's, he lived in, he grew up in West London. Is it? Yeah. Okay, sick. Yeah. So you've, you've been doing music videos for a while documenting yeah um so it's very much the visual arts how have you seen that um progressed up until now in in the scene and where do you see it going um i think that with a video it kind of like 
it's now it's at a place where you haven't got to spend millions on videos because like, yes. anyone can do them or whatever but you just got to be a bit more creative with what you want to do mm. um documentary there's always room for more that's why I want to come back and do a lot more and my own journey I've kind of got a little bit more in front of camera than I ever was before so like in the new stuff you'll see me actually in front of camera yeah. as well as because I think that gets the story across more you know like and I enjoy that side of it as much as now and I never did before yeah like you said yeah like you started off shy yeah now, risky yeah. Rose was a mask and then yeah. now now, yeah, now the, yeah, I can just do all of it and I enjoy that side of it. And um, But yeah, it's like, I think with the video side of things now, it's like everyone, you got to find your style. Like, even with me, I kind of, like the VHS thing and all that kind of, and a diff, I've got a different way of doing things. Like, it's a lot more, I suppose it's like documentary-ish kind of style but then not, and it's kind of weird. Like, I can't even describe my own style. I just do what I... Mm. I feel I like that natural kind of vibe. Like I'm not like one of these directors who completely and utterly like, no, you didn't do this properly directed. Right, da, right. Da, da. Yeah, it's not like kind of let things happen mm. and I uh, capture the moments. In as long as you, I've got what I need to have. Like, it's very intuitive. Yeah, like one of my favorite videos is you. Would, you probably wouldn't look at it and think it was me from the style. Is uh, from an artist called Yizzy and mm. it's called Mr. Cray. And basically, I had him playing both the Cray brothers. Oh, sick! So I got him both on screen at the same time and yeah. the two brothers and like yeah he goes to like the boxing club the, the cafe yeah, yeah. where they used to hang around the pubs and like and like, yeah, he's literally both and you probably would look at and not think that I'd done it because it's so different to mm. anything so I can't, it's kind of like you've got to just be creative and attack every tune different yeah like you know like, and be willing to break a boundary and I think sometimes with videos a lot at the moment can look the same 100%. And like people are scared to break that boundary yeah, of, yeah, yeah. you know, like you haven't got to do this and that. Like you can, like there's some very good videos, very, very good videos. But yeah, there is that, you know, like just find what you want to do. Mm. Don't always conform to the, like the, the standard generic. Yeah, yeah. What you've seen, like yeah, bring yeah. something yeah, new. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you don't always have to pull out the drone. Yeah. Or you don't always have to use the steady cam. Mm. Like, sometimes it might be a handheld wobbly one. Yeah. Like exactly. it works, you know, like it, there's no laws to anything. Mm. If it works, if it fits the tune, then do what you want to do. Yeah. Like the gigs Theophilus one. Like there was a lot of long takes, no edit because mm. it fit the tune. Yeah. 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 And you yeah. had to use Theophilus's dancing and yeah. whatever. So it's like, all right. Well, it's about catching the vibe and that's yeah, what you've exactly. always, that's what you've always done. Thank you've you. caught the vibe. Like, did you ever set out and, and say, look, I, I want it, I want it to be this specific style or anything like that? I've always just kind of with the videos, it's been more what I feel. So yeah, like because certain times, like even now, I go and do something, and I feel like I'm blagging it. Because mm. because a lot of the time you're getting the call, and yeah. it's like, can you shoot a video for me now? Yeah, like, <laughs> so chip, you don't get time yeah. to prepare in that no, sense. Like the Chip Jamie Frisco video, I shot in an hour. Raw. We had an hour. And how did that feel do you get nervous about that or I'm used to it now yeah <laughs> and I think they know that I'm probably one of the only guys that, that they could, could do that with and mm. it would work you know yeah, like, yeah. they're going to get something back that is doable you know what I mean because they know that I've got to uh, where they're attacking it lyrically and mm. with the flows they know that I get it from the the visual yeah so I can relay it. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Because so, you're relying on your yeah, intuition. Yeah, yeah. That is so sick. That is so sick. It's almost like you're Clark Kent in a sense, like <laughs> turn off the light in the cab. All right, cool, yeah. video, hour, yeah, <laughs> come right. back, yeah. whatever. Yeah. That is so dope. Yeah, yeah. like I remember like, when I done the um, Skip Man video, we'd done most of it and then one scene we needed, we had to go to Visions. I was waiting for the call to go and do the Visions thing and it ended up coming like two in the morning mm. and I was in the cab and someone stuck their hand out and took me home. Like, it was like it was meant. Like, they went, like, they wanted to go Shoreditch. Oh, wow. So I was like, you're bringing me pretty much yeah, back yeah. east. Like, I'm nearly home. Like, cool. <laughs> like, and Envisions is east. Yeah, and well. Envisions is east. So it was yeah. like, everything was meant. You know, like, it's just weird <laughs> how it all aligns. And That's crazy. upstairs helps you out. You know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. you were saying before. Yeah. Mad. That's yeah. crazy. 
Bro, you're a legend, man. You're an <laughs> Thank absolute you. legend. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, if you could yeah. go back to um, when you was in year 11, last day of year 11, mm. secondary school for American listeners, yeah. um, knowing what you know now, yeah. what advice would you give yourself? Go to Pirate Radio earlier with a camera. <laughs> yeah. And don't ignore YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Good yeah. one, yeah. good one. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah, YouTube killed the business model with a DVD. Of course it did. Yeah, and there was no way of making money of it in the, in the beginning. So it was like you kind of it was like it was at a time in life where you know like I need to earn, mm. so I need to do something. This I've really set this foundation, and I, but now I need to make money. And the YouTube wasn't doing that, and it was like I can't sustain running around filming and then throwing it out for free. Of course, because it wasn't really monetizable back then, no, not when it first yeah, came out. Yeah, not when it first came out. And then, you know, but nah, yeah, definitely that would be advice. Yeah. Ignore that. Just carry on. Yeah. Yeah, get the cab earlier and do that. <laughs> <laughs> do that. That's, that would have been the thing. Yeah, run with that. Run with the YouTube. But no, nah, and also definitely go to more pirate radio. Mm. Like, go up there. Yeah, because it's a thing of the past now. Yeah. Film every pirate radio set every Sunday. Legendary. Ah, oh, I've missed pirate imagine? radio, man. Mm. That is the one I miss. Yeah. I remember the first time I went into Deja, I loved it. It was like, oh, this is the roof. Yeah, you know, yeah like, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you heard stories, but yeah. now I'm up here. I, it's nuts. Yeah. yeah, because you couldn't just go. No. No, you couldn't just go. But no, that would have been, that would probably be my one. Mm. Get on, yeah, go... Um, do more filming of radio. Like, I've done a lot, but more. Yeah. Because, yeah, it's a time of the past, man. Oh, man. Can't yeah. bring that back. No, you can't. You can't at all. It's crazy. Um, so what's coming up for Risky Roads? Um, I've got a few things in the pipeline. Like, obviously, this Birmingham project. Mm -hmm. Using videos as normal. And I've had a couple of meetings about some things that are quite exciting. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say anything. Yeah, of course, moment, of course. But, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man, it's just, I just keep plugging every day. And my, like, just, my days are so spontaneous. Like, I'm here talking now, and I'm going to go and check gigs in a minute, listen to his album. Sick. And, like, tomorrow I could get a phone call from someone and go shoot a video. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's, my, it's a mad life, but I love it. Love that. Love that. Yes. So, now you've gone through For yeah. the Creators experience, um, gone down memory lane. Who would you be interested in hearing answer, like, the same kind of questions? From the visual standpoint? Anyone. Uh, I think a good one would be basically my pal as well. And um if one of like he's done a like he done a lot early days as well, was mm. A plus. Mm. Uh he was arguably one of like maybe the first yeah. to film stuff. Like he filmed the um Jammer's birthday bash set mm. and Eskimo dance sets. I suppose me and him like we've like we're pals, and but I've never really asked him like why he, or how you know like yeah yeah of, yeah the yeah. conversations you don't really have with no no yeah, exactly like, that's what's so sick about this yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so he's probably won because um yeah he's done he's done his he's done his played his part in mm. in this as well you know definitely like he's been about for years like I said before me as well you know like yeah. he just got hold of a camera and started filming so yeah, it'd be nice to hear. That would be sick. His side of yeah stuff. Might be good for you to do it. Yeah. Might be, that would be cool. Uh, as yeah. a guest host or something yeah, like that. Yeah, get me, Gemma, and A plus in oh there talking days, old visuals. That would be sick. Because yeah, he's yeah. another one as well. Like, yeah. what inspired him to do what, like, exactly. as a producer. Right, Why exactly. mess with a visual? Mm. Yeah. And then evolve into an artist yeah. as well. Crazy, crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Man, this has been legendary oh, thank you very people, much people are going to love this man no, people thank you are going to love this um, thanks everyone for listening oh where can people follow you online um, I'm at Risky Roads with a Z mm -hmm. on Insta Twitter and uh, YouTube so like YouTube's is YouTube forward slash Risky Roads yeah and everything else is at Risky Roads and yeah that's me wicked wicked thank you very much all good man all good um, thanks for your ears for another legendary episode <laughs> um, of For The Creators we're on Instagram at For The Creators Podcast um, on Twitter at For Underscore The Creators um, you can email us on For The Creators Show at gmail.com we'd love to hear your feedback 
um really hope you enjoyed this episode i know i did um yeah subscribe review and share please and thanks for coming on thank you thanks for having me you got everyone thank you